Hello, second graders. So wonderful to see you. My name is Krista Johnson. I'm with All Memphis, and I'm here to teach a lesson. Today, we're going to learn a different type of syllable. So it's exciting to learn something new. So for today's lesson, all you need is some paper to write on, something to write with, so a pen or a pencil, and a hard surface to write on. So if you're sitting at a table or a desk, um, that's great. If not, why don't you get a book or a magazine or something hard that you can put the paper on? So I'm gonna give you about um, 10 to 20 seconds to go do that, and then come back here and we'll get started. See you soon. Okay, so why don't you get seated and we'll start our lesson. So if you've been following along, you know the first thing we do is we warm up our brain with starting to talk. No better way to get warmed up and ready to learn than actually starting to talk and use our brain a little bit. So I like to give a sentence starter every morning for us to talk about. So this one today is, this morning I feel blank. Okay, so let's take a minute and think, how do you feel this morning? What do you feel like? So let's take a minute to think. And I'll go first, I'll share first. So this morning, I feel a little bit tired. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't get great sleep last night. So this morning, I feel a little bit tired. So why don't you share out now? So I wanna hear you, if I were there, I'd wanna hear you say loud and proud, this morning I feel blank. So go ahead and share out with an adult, a brother, a sister, um, or just say it out loud to yourself, go ahead. Awesome, so I think I heard some people say, this morning I feel good, this morning I feel hungry, and I heard one person say, this morning, I feel excited to learn about a new syllable. Awesome. Okay, so the next thing that we do every day is we warm our eyes up with our card deck. So our card deck, I'm gonna show you a bunch of letters and they make sounds. And we're gonna say what the sounds are and then say the rule if we need the rule for that sound. So. Um, say the sound and we'll touch our throat um, when we say that sound, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna make myself a little bit bigger so you can see my mouth if you need to. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Ow, and when do we use this? At the beginning or middle of words. Great job, this is a suffix. The suffix ing means happening right now. Your turn. Great job. This is A, repeat. Good. So A and the rule is usually followed by a T, like in the word eight. Okay, so let's do this again. A, usually followed by a T. Great. Another suffix. We have a couple suffixes coming up. So anytime we see the dash in front of a letter, we know it's a suffix. So we'll say the suffix S means more than one. Your turn. Great. The suffix ES means more than one. Your turn. Good. And we add ES to words ending in S, X, Z, C, H, or S, H. So there's five times that we use that. All right, the next one. The suffix er means more than. Your turn. Good. Ooh, repeat. Good. Second sound, uh, repeat. Good. In the middle of a word, like in book or moon or second sound is er 
at the end of a long word after an S or a T, like professor or doctor. So two sounds or second sound, er. Great job. E at the beginning or middle of words. Second sound is e eh at the beginning or middle of words. Er, e, so this is our e consonant e, and the rule is the e at the end makes the vowel say its name. Great job, it's the magic e. Ah, at the beginning or middle of words. O consonant E says O. The rule, the E at the end makes the vowel say its name. This one has two sounds, U, second sound, U. The E at the end makes the vowel say its name. Ah, at the end of words. This can also be in the middle of words if it's followed by an L or an N. Okay, so let's do this again. Ah, at the end of a word, or if it's followed by a single L or N. Great. I, the E at the end makes the vowel say its name. A, the E at the end makes the vowel say its name. The suffix ed means happened in the past. Okay, this one has three sounds. The first sound is t. Good. The second sound is d. And the third sound is id. Good. So let's do this again. The suffix ed means happened in the past. Three sounds. Great. D. Id. G. Second sound is j. And when will it say j? When followed by an e, i, or y. K. At the end of short words after short vowels. This one has two sounds. First sound is o at the end of a word or when followed by a single L or N. And the second sound is ow at the end of a word or when followed by a single L or N. Okay, so two sounds, O, second sound, ow. The rule at the end of a word or followed by a final L or N. Great job, J at the end of a short word after short vowel. Good job. K. Second sound, s. When does it say s? When followed by an e, i, or y. Ch. And the rule here, at the end of short words after short vowels. Great job. I. Second sound, I. When does it say I? At the end of an open syllable. So if you've been following along with us, you know what an open syllable is. So an open syllable is when a syllable ends with a vowel and the vowel says, says its name. So I or I. Ah, second sound, O. When does it say O? At the end of an open syllable. A, second sound, a, when does it say A? At the end of an open syllable. A, uh, second sound, U. What else can a long U say? U, good. When does it say U or U? At the end of an open syllable. E, eh, second sound, E. When does it say E? At the end of an open syllable. Awesome job. So way to get through that card deck. There was a lot of sounds there. I'm gonna shrink my face back up because we're gonna move on to our sight words. So our sight words are words that we want to be able to recognize what they say just by looking at them. If you've been following along, you'll know that these sight words look really familiar because you've seen them before. 
So I'm gonna read these words and then you're gonna read them back to me. Okay, the first one, especially, repeat. Good, length, repeat. Great, broad, repeat. Good, I'm gonna read them all three and then you repeat them. Especially, length, broad, your turn. Awesome job. So let's go ahead and move on to learning a new sight word for today. This sight word is beauty. Repeat. Great. And the letters in beauty are B-E-A-U-T-Y. Repeat. Great job. The word is beauty. Repeat. Good, now remember, we need to be able to read this by just looking at it. And sometimes we can help our brains remember reading if we also use our arms. So let's go ahead and write this in the air three times. So follow along with me, put two fingers in the air. Let's go B, E, A, U, T, Y, beauty. Great job, let's do it again. B, E, A, U, T, Y, beauty. One more time, get those fingers in the air. Let's follow along with me. B, E, A, U, T, Y, beauty. Great job. Okay, so let's move on to our next section. Here we're gonna do some word reading, um, but in order to read these words, um, I want you to write them down on your paper because we're gonna annotate them. And again, those that have been following along know that annotating means that we're gonna circle and underline and box very important parts of the word to help our eyes look at the most important parts for reading, okay? So first time you need your paper and pen or pencil and a surface to write on, I'm gonna go ahead and underline the word and I want you to write it on your paper, okay? So go ahead and write this word that I just underlined. Next one, let's write this word. Okay, next word. Next word. Now, if you wrote those words all the way across on your paper, let's go down to the next line to get some more room. And if you wrote them going down, that's absolutely fine as well. So let's write this word that I just underlined. Let's write this word. Next one. And the next word here. Okay, so I'm gonna give you five more seconds to make sure you have all eight of those words written on your paper. Great. So now that we've done that, the first thing I want to do is be detectives, reading detectives. So what a good reader does, and I know you are all good readers, is we look at words and we figure out certain parts of the word that's going to help us read it with more fluency. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look to see if words have any prefix. Do they have something at the beginning of the word, which is called a prefix or a suffix at the end of the word? Okay. So let's look at this. I'll do the first one together. So here, this word has this prefix re. And you remember from last time, re means again, okay? Okay, so now I want you to look and see if you see any more prefixes in the words here. I'll give you about five seconds to put a bracket around any more of the prefixes that you see. Go ahead. 
Okay, so I see one here. And in the second row, my second row, I see one here. So your paper should have these three prefixes in a bracket. So if your paper looks like that, awesome job. And if it doesn't, go ahead and make the correction um, because we're gonna use these marks to read the word. Okay, the second thing we wanna do is we wanna determine um, the vowels in the word. So we want to underline the vowels. Vowels are so important because vowels let us know how many syllables are in a word and what that vowel is going to say helps us read the word properly. So let's go ahead and look at our first word here. I actually see a vowel and a combination of letters that makes a vowel sound. So all in this one word. So the vowel I see is the E here all by itself. And then I see a bossy E at the end of the word. So that's an ER, okay? So I would underline the E and the ER because those are the two letters, um, letter or letters that are making up the vowel sounds in this word. And we know, because it has two vowel sounds, how many syllables is this word gonna have? That's right, it's gonna have two. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you underline the vowels in the other words. Remember, we don't need to underline any vowels that we find in prefixes because we, the prefix has its own meaning that we already know. Okay, so go ahead and underline any other vowels you see or vowel teams. All right, let's go through and see if yours looks like mine. In the second word here, I see just an I all by itself. Um, after that prefix, I just see the I. This word, I see two vowels. I see an E here and an E here. Now, this word that has a prefix, I see an A consonant E. So I'm gonna underline the entire A consonant E because the A, E at the end makes the A say its name. So that whole portion is what we wanna draw our attention to our eyes. All right, my next one, I see two bossy R combinations. I see one here and one here, okay? In the next word, I see a vowel team. I see the A-Y, what does A-Y say? That's right, A. Um, I have two vowels here, an I and an O. And then again here, I have an A and an I. Okay, so if your paper looks like mine, awesome. If it doesn't, go ahead and make the correction to make it look like mine. So the next thing I wanna do before we go and look at blends is I wanna break up, I wanna put a dot where we would break up the syllables, okay? So let's look at the word here with um, this first word. And remember we underlined two vowel sounds, so that means this word has two syllables. And if I look at the pattern that it's making here, it's a vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel pattern. And do you remember where we break that pattern up? We break it between the two consonants, okay? So there we go. Now this word, we only underlined one vowel, so we know that we don't have to break this word into syllables. Here we have another word with two syllables, so go ahead and put the dot where you think it should be. Great, I put it right here because we have vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. I'll write that under for us to see. And when we have vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, we break between the two consonants. All right, next word, we only underlined one vowel sound. So this is only one vowel, I mean, excuse me, only one syllable. Um, so the next word here, we have a different pattern. We have vowel, consonant, vowel. And when we have this, we normally break after the first vowel here. So we'll add the syllable division here. This word, we only have one syllable, um, one vowel sound other than the prefix, so we don't need to break any syllables apart. This word, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, where are we gonna break this? That's right, between the two consonants. And our last word, I see the same pattern, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, and we're gonna break it between the two consonants. 
Okay, now that our words are broken up into syllables. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is draw a box around any blends that you might see. So don't forget blends are two letters that come together, but we hear both sounds in those letters. Now remember, there can't be a blend that jumps through a syllable division. So for example, in D here would not be a blend because there's a syllable division there. Okay, so go through and see if you can find any blends. All right, I just found two. Let's see if you found the same two I did. I found a blend at the end of this word here. And then I found a blend at the beginning of the base word in this word. Okay, so now that we've put all of our marks on the paper and can help our eyes read the word better, let's go ahead and read these words. So I'm gonna underline, actually, why don't I put a big box around it? Why don't I'll put a box around it and you read, okay? So this word, good. Two syllables, fender, repeat, fender, great job. Okay, go ahead and read the next word. Great, and this one had the prefix on it, remix, together, remix. Great job, another two syllable word, go ahead and read this next one. Good, segment, next one, rename, great. Next one, border. Next one, replay. Next one, ribbon. Last one, great, candid. Now let's go ahead and read them for fluency, so let's read them a little faster. I'll go first. Fender, remix, segment, rename. Your turn. Awesome, the last four, border, replay, ribbon, candid. Your turn. Awesome job. Now I'm gonna clear my marks and I'm gonna ask you some questions about the words that you see up here, okay? So in this group of four words in the first row on my screen, so let's bring your eyes back up to my screen. In the first row, what word rhymes with Tinder? Repeat. Great job, so Fender rhymes with Tinder. Great, now in the second row, if you look back up here at my screen, on the second row here, read me the word that can be tied to make a bow. Awesome, that's right, ribbon. Okay, let's come back up to the first row here. Name the word that means to mix again. Go ahead. Good, to mix again, we have remix. So that is the base word mix and the prefix re, meaning again, so to mix again. All right, you guys are doing such a great job. Let's go ahead and do the last one. So let's look at the bottom row here, and this one's a little bit of a challenge one. This is an analogy. So the analogy is start is to begin as truthful is to blank. So start is to begin. So let's think about that. When we start something, we begin. So as truthful is to blank. So when we're truthful about something, we are candid. Okay, so now maybe you've learned a vocab word. Candid means that we're very truthful and open about something. So great job expanding our brains um, with our words to read. So let's move on to our next page. For the next one, we're gonna be using our pencil and paper or pen and paper um, again. So this one, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say some sounds and I want you to write the letter or letters that make those sounds. Okay, so is everyone ready? Great job. The first thing I want you to write down is the sound that makes ing, like in sing. 
I'll go ahead and make my face a little bit bigger again so you can see. So ing, repeat. Good, like in sing. Go ahead and write the letters that make the ing sound. Next one, ah, like in ox. Go ahead, repeat. Good, write the letter that makes the ah sound, like in ox. Now I'm giving you the word here because there's a couple different ways that we write the ah sound. So we want to write it the way it's spelled in the word ox. Okay, the next one is a at the end of an open syllable. How do we make the a sound at the end of an open syllable? Okay, the next one is u at the end of an open syllable. Repeat. Great job. Okay, the next one is a, like in apple, repeat. Okay, the next one is a, like in rain, repeat. Good, write the letters that make the a sound, like in rain. Next one, e, like in egg, repeat. Good. And the last one, I want you to write the prefix that means again or back. Great, let's go through and see if your paper looks like my paper. So the first one was the letters that make ing, I-N-G, ing, okay? Our next one was, or the letter that makes the ah sound like an ox. So that's just the O, okay? Our next one, that what makes A at the end of an open syllable is just an A. Great job, remember it says a or a at the end of an open syllable. Okay, our next one, what says u at the end of an open syllable? Same thing, the letter u says u at the end of an open syllable. Awesome, and our next one was the sound a, so a, apple, a. The next one was a like in the word rain. So this is a vowel team, so this is a I. Great, and the next one was e, like in egg, so just an E. And the last one that I had you write was the suffix that means again or back, and that is R-E, re. Okay, so does your sheet look like my sheet with all of these sounds? So these are sounds that we're going to use in our following slides with reading and dictated sentences. So let's move on. Um, go ahead and find another blank line on your paper because we are going to start our reading, our, excuse me, our spelling now. Okay, so um, the first word that I want you to spell is painting. Repeat. Good. So painting has a suffix at the end. So let's sound out our um, base word first. So what's the base word in painting? That's right, paint. P A N T. Okay, go ahead and write that and don't forget to add the suffix that means happening right now. Okay, so the next word I want you to spell is repack. Repeat. Good, repack. Now this word has a prefix that I hear on it. So when we spell it, we wanna focus on our base word. So what's our base word? That's right, pack. Let's sound that out, P-A-C. So don't forget, we have a special way of spelling k 
at the end of a short word after a short vowel. So go ahead and write the word repack and don't forget to add that prefix. Okay, the next word, misprint. Repeat. Good, misprint. I also hear another prefix on that. So with the word misprint, what is our base word? That's right, print. Let's sound that out. P er, I, n, t, print, right? So write misprint and don't forget to add your prefix. All right, the next word is unblock. Repeat. Good. Do you hear a prefix on that word? I sure do. So in the word unblock, what is our base word? That's right, block. Let's sound it out. B -u -a -k. Don't forget the special spelling of k at the end of a short word after a short vowel. Go ahead and write unblock and don't forget to add your prefix. All right, and your last word is brook. Repeat. Good, so a brook is a little stream of water. So brook, go ahead, let's sound it out. Okay, go ahead and write brook. All right, let's go through and check our spelling. So the first word was print, uh, excuse me, painting. All right, so p a n t and then i n g, painting. All right, our next word that we had was repack. So we had the suffix re and then p a k c k at the end of a short word after a short vowel. Great job. The next word that we I asked you to spell was the word misprint. So I had the suffix or the prefix miss and then p -er -i -n -t, misprint. Great job. The next word that I asked you to spell was unblock. So we had the prefix un and then p -u -a -k. CK at the end of a short word after a short vowel. And the last word was a one syllable word, meaning a little stream of water. It was a brook. B, er, u, o, o, k. Good, brook. Why didn't we use a CK at the end of this word? That's right, because it's not after a short vowel, it's after a vowel team that says u. Uh. So we just used a K. All right, so go ahead, see if your page looks like my page. And if it does, awesome. And if it doesn't, go ahead and make the correction and we'll move on. Okay, so let's go to our next slide. Our next slide, finally, we're at learning our new feature for today. So I'm really excited about this. So this is a new type of syllable. So last week we talked about our consonant LE syllable. This type of syllable is called a final stable syllable. So let's think about that. Just can anyone tell me what final means? Yep, I heard someone say it. Final, final means at the very end, okay? And what does stable mean? Okay, there's two meanings of stable. I heard someone say it's where a horse lives and you're absolutely right. But stable also means solid and unchanging. So hopefully a table is stable because it always is sturdy. So when, and then we have syllable, final stable syllable. And a syllable is a word or a part of a word with one vowel sound. And so what we're learning today is a group of letters that have a vowel sound, and anytime we see this group of letters together, it will be the final syllable in the word, okay? 
So our stable final syllable, our final stable syllable today is chur. Repeat, like in the word picture. Repeat. Good. So it's T U R E. Repeat. Good. And what does that say? That's right. Chur. And what's our word to remember it by? Picture. Great job. Let me just draw your attention right here. Here's the word picture written. So let's go ahead and look at what I'm talking about with the final stable syllable. So we'll notice I see our T-U-R-E here. So I know that I can draw a dot there because T-U-R-E is always going to be the final syllable that doesn't change sounds. And what does T-U-R say? Chur. Good. So to read this word, we have picture. Picture. All right. So let's try to get this final stable syllable nice in our brain to remember. So let's go ahead and write it three times. So we're gonna, so get your pen and paper or your pencil and paper and let's write it again or write it three times. So we're gonna say T-U-R-E picture chur. Okay, your turn. Good, so you should have done P T U R E picture sure. All right, last time, go ahead and do it with me. T U R E picture sure. All right, so now we know anytime we see those letters together, we can automatically put our syllable dot in front of it. So let's go ahead and practice that with some words. So here are our words that all have our new final stable syllable, which is what? That's right, T-U-R-E. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna underline when we see a T-U-R-E, and we're gonna put a dot right before it to rec for our eyes to recognize it's the last syllable in the word. So I'll go first. I'll do the first one with you. So our first one here, I see my T-U-R-E right here. And so I'm going to break my syllable right here. Okay. So in order to save a little bit of time here, I'm going to go ahead and break the words up on my screen without having you write them down. If you'd like to write them down, you can follow along with me and write them on your paper as I break them up. Okay, so we already did the first one together. Let's do this one. I see my T-U-R-E, and I'm gonna divide my syllable right in front of it because I know that is a final stable syllable. Next one, T-U-R-E, divide my syllable. Next one, T-U-R-E, divide my syllable. Next one, T-U-R-E, Divide my syllable for our final stable syllable. T-U-R-E, final stable syllable. T-U-R-E, final stable syllable. T-U-R-E, final stable syllable. Okay, so now I've done all of that. And so reading is gonna be a lot easier here because our eyes have already broken these words into syllables. The only thing that we need to really make a decision about is what the first syllable says, because we know in all of these words, the second syllable says sure, because it's the final stable syllable. So when our eyes look at the first syllable in all of these words, we have to decide mostly what the vowel sound says. So here I can see that this is a closed syllable, and this is going to say the short I sound. So this is mixture. Good, mixture. The next one, I see that this is also a short syllable because it's a, or also a short sound because it's a closed syllable. So go ahead and read this. Good, pasture. Great job. Another short vowel sound in a closed syllable. And the word is denture. Good. 
Next one, short syllable. Good, lecture. Short vowel because it's a closed syllable. And that one is culture. Good, another short vowel sound in a closed syllable. Puncture, puncture. Great job. Now here, I have a vowel team, so this is gonna say a long sound. E-A, when it says a long sound, is E, right? So here we have feature. All together? Awesome, feature. Same thing here, it looks like I have an open syllable here as well, because when a vowel ends a syllable, the vowel says its name and it's an open syllable. So this syllable says, that's right, nature, nature. All right, let's go ahead and read these row by row. I'll read first, mixture, pasture, denture. Your turn. Awesome, next row, lecture, culture, puncture. Your turn. Awesome, last row, feature, nature. Your turn. Great reading. I'm glad we got practice looking at that stable final syllable. Now we're gonna have a little practice spelling that stable final syllable. Okay, so the first word that I want you to spell, so go ahead and get your paper and your pencil or pen out again and something to write on. All right, so the first word I want you to spell is capture. Repeat. Good, so capture. So what's our first syllable? Let's write cap. Go ahead and write cap. And then add our stable final, our final stable syllable, which is tur, which is T-U-R-E. So the word is capture. Okay, the next word I want you to spell is texture. Repeat. Good. So two syllables, texture. So go ahead and write your first syllable, text. Don't forget you can sound out on your fingers to help you. And then write your final stable syllable, sure, texture. Okay, your next one, nature, repeat. Good, what's our first syllable? That's right, nay. What letter makes the long sound A at the end of an open syllable? That's right, so go ahead and write nature. Okay, next word, you ready? Okay, future, repeat. Good, what's our first syllable? Few, and what makes the U at the end of an open syllable? Okay, so write future. And the last one that we're gonna write is posture. Repeat. Okay, let's break it into syllables to help. Posture. So go ahead and write the first syllable and then add our final stable syllable. Okay, so let's go ahead and check, see if your paper looks like mine. The first was capture, so k, ap, and then chur, T-U-R-E, capture. The second one that we had was the word texture. Notice how it's very easy to spell when I split it into syllables. So text, x, chur, T-U-R-E, texture. All right, and then the next one that we're gonna write is nature. So with nature, I my first syllable was n a. A is at the end of an open syllable. Sure, t u r e, nature. Okay. The next one that I asked you to write was future. So my first syllable f u at the end of an open syllable, chur, T-U-R-E. 
And then the last one that I asked you to write was, oh, excuse me there, I meant to shrink this box, not move it, was posture. My first syllable was pos, posture, T-U-R-E, posture. All right, so go ahead, and if yours look like mine, awesome job. Spelling can be so much easier when we break it into syllables and when we have final stable syllables that are very predictable. So great job with all of that new feature. So we're on the home stretch here. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna review our learned words and we're gonna learn a new learned word. So the lesson that you had last time, you learned the word color, repeat. Good, I want you to go ahead and write the word color three times on your paper. You can write it just next to each other three times um, and say the name of the letters as you write it. So I'll do it with you. C-O-L-O-R, color. Great, next one. C-O-L-O-R, color. Great. And our last one, C-O-L-O-R, color. Okay. So we got to really remember this because we can't sound this word out. We have to just be able to know how to spell it um, when we hear it. Okay. Next, we're going to learn our new learn word. Our new learn word is often. Repeat. Good. Often. And the unfair part is this T. When we say often, we don't hear that T. Sometimes you'll hear people say often when we do hear it, but very often people only say often, okay? So that T is our, really our unfair part. So the letters in this word are O-F-T-E-N. Repeat. Great job. So let's go ahead and write that two times on your paper. The word is often, O-F-T-E-N. So let's write it as we say the name of the letters, O-F-T-E-N, often. And then let's do the second one, O-F-T-E-N, often. Now, before you do the third one, can you please cover up your paper so you can't see the words that you just wrote? And don't look up at me right now. Let's close our eyes and think about what the letters are and then open them and write them on our paper. Okay, so I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna picture it in my head. I'm gonna keep my work covered up and I'm gonna spell it. Good, so you should have spelled O-F-T-E-N. And the word is often. Okay, great job. The next slide, I really like dictated sentences. This is where I read a sentence to you and you get to write the sentence. So this really lets us use everything that we've learned today and in previous lessons to write a sentence with proper spelling. Also, don't forget that we need punctuation at the end of a sentence and capital letters at the beginning of a sentence. Um, so. I'm gonna read the sentence to you. We have spelled most of these words before in our lesson, so if you need any help, you can look up. But if you don't need any help, let's just remember our techniques of sounding words out, spelling with syllables, and the learned words that we just know how need to know how to spell. Okay, so the first sentence I want you to repeat is, I will have good posture in the future. Repeat. Good, I will have good posture in the future. Repeat. Good, so I'm gonna straighten up my posture. Go ahead and start writing. I will have good posture. In the future. I will have good posture in the future. Okay, let's take a look at what you should have written there. So I will have, don't forget that E at the end of have because no English word ends with a V. So I will have good posture. So this is a word that we've already written, Os 
future, T-U-R-E, in the future, future. Awesome, okay, am I done with that sentence? Ah, you caught me, I need punctuation, so I'm gonna put a period here. So go ahead and read the sentence. That's right, I will have good posture in the future. So if you guys got that right, awesome job. If you made any mistakes, go ahead and make the correction and we'll move on to our second sentence. So our second sentence that I want you to write is, a painting can often capture the texture and color in nature. That's a pretty big sentence, so let's try it again. A painting can often capture the texture and color in nature. A painting can often capture the texture and color in nature. Repeat. Good, let's start writing. I'll read it in phrases. A painting can often capture the texture and color in nature. A painting can often capture the texture and color in nature. Okay, let's take a look to see if we got this. A painting, so paint, Ing. A painting can often, that was one of our learned words, O-F-T-E-N, capture, capture the texture, texture, the texture and color. That was a learned word, C-O-L-O-R, in nature, nature. A painting can often capture the texture and color in nature. Awesome job. So if your sentence looks like mine, wonderful. And if it doesn't, go ahead and make the correction. All right, and so then we'll move on to our final section for today in this lesson, which is oral reading. Okay, great. So now we're here at oral reading. Let's read these sentences one by one, but before we start reading, let's highlight some important words. So in this first sentence, we're gonna underline the word that has our new feature. And so our new feature today was what? That's right, our final stable syllable, T-U-R-E, which is chur. So I see it right here in this word. Um, so why don't you go ahead and read that sentence to yourself? Great job, let's read it together. One morning, a small vulture chose to leave his nest. Okay, let's do it one more time together. One morning, a small vulture chose to leave his nest. Awesome job. Okay, let's go to the next sentence, number two here. Do you see any words that have our final stable syllable in them? I don't either. So I think this is a sentence that you can read all of the words. Um, Okay, so go ahead and read. Great, let's read it together. He had read books of beautiful places and wanted to see them himself. Okay, let's do it again. Read with me, read out loud. He had read books of beautiful places and wanted to see them himself. Great job. Okay, let's look at sentence number three. I see two words with our final stable syllable in them. Can you find them? Great. I hope you pointed to this word 
And this word, this word also has a suffix s, right? The suffix that means more than one, but we have our final stable syllable right before that. Okay, so go ahead and read that sentence. Great, so let's read it together. He soared over a pasture full of interesting creatures. One more time. He soared over a pasture full of interesting creatures. Awesome job. Um, number four, can you pick out any words with our final stable syllable? Good, I see two as well. So I see T-U-R-E. And again, we have our suffix S. So don't get um, confused by seeing that. And then we have another one right here, another suffix S. Okay, um, so go ahead and read that sentence. Even though I'm asking you to read yourself, why don't you please read out loud? Okay, go ahead. Great, let's read it together. He passed towns with tall structures and parks with stone sculptures. Great job, one more time. He passed towns with tall structures and parks with stone sculptures. All right, last sentence. Um, I see a couple things in this sentence. I Do you guys see any words with our final stable syllable? Yep, I do too. I see one right here and I see one right here. And then I also see one of our sight words right here. Anything else? All right, then go ahead and read that sentence. All right, that's a big one. Let's read it together. But the small bird felt at home when he landed by the sea and stood up in rapture as he saw the beauty of nature in the waves. Okay, let's read it one more time. But the small bird felt at home when he landed by the sea and stood up in rapture as he saw the beauty of nature in the waves. All right, wonderful job, wonderful lesson today. Our first final stable syllable, you'll be learning another one next time. And um, keep up the great learning. I'll see you again soon, bye-bye.